Hello everyone, welcome to another Roblox tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a button that will uh, spawn and despawn a part or a model. So this will work for both parts and models. It will not work for more complex things that have like uh, different transparencies. Um, such as this house here, you see it's got windows and stuff. I mean, I bet you could adapt it to do that, but my generalized version only works for small things like this hay bale. And I bet that's what you're going to do unless you're doing something like a house. Um, and I see a spider crawling on my wall. I'm not going to care about that. Um, so uh, I'm going to use this hay bale as my uh, example part. And I'm going to make a screen GUI that has a button. So I'm going to make that real quick. So my button looks like that. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a local script inside here. And this will do all the logic. So I'm just going to do this on the client side. Uh, if you want to do it on the server side, you could, of course, use a remote event. But for something like a hay bale, um, I would suggest using uh, a local script. So first, some variables. First one will be the part. And I want to uh, spawn in this hay bale here. So of course you pre-position the object in your Roblox Studio, and then you just reference it in your code, which will then like despawn and spawn it. Um, so I have my hay bale here, and in, it's and, and it's inside a props folder inside of workspace so uh, to reference that I'm going to be typing workspace dot props and I'm going to wait for child make sure you wait for child in something like a local script because local scripts load a lot faster uh, on the client and stuff might not be loaded in so you're going to want to wait for child and I'm going to wait for my hay bale medium here okay so that's the part and uh Next, I will get a button variable, which is just going to set to the script.parent.button. So that will just be to detect if the player clicks the button. Uh, next, few variables. Original transparency and original can collide. So when I despawn the part, I want it to be completely transparent so I can't see it. And two, I want to be able to walk through it. Um, because if I leave the can collide to what it normally is, then it's just going to be an invisible part, but like the physics will still be there. So you'll randomly bump into it, even though it's invisible. So I want to make sure that it's actually like from the player aspect, um, from the player point of view, you cannot see this object and you cannot walk on it. So I want these two variables because in the case that the part is a window, for example, I want to be able to retain the original transparency of that part. So um, to do that, I'm going to use a ternary operator idiom. If you don't know what ternary operators are, um, they exist in other programming languages. And that is basically like if A, then B, else C. So if A is true, then return B, else return C. And there's no such like actual operator in Luma, but there is a simple way to do that, to replicate that. And that's just using A and B or C using this format. So uh, the original transparency, I want to check if it's a, it's a base part, which means that it has a transparency property, then we're, gonna, we're just going to get the transparency of that. If it's a model, I'm just going to go like lazy find the first base part inside the model and just take the transparency of that and of course you could adapt this um, if this doesn't work out for you so using this template uh, in the if statement where a is if uh, if the um, part is a base part then we're gonna get the part dot transparency or part find first child which is a and in here we're gonna put um, base part dot transparency so what this does is if the part um, whoops do not put an if there you just put the, the function um, so 
we're going to check if the part is a base part. If this is true, which triggers this AND because, you know, this part is true, and the part dies transparency, if it's a base part, then the part will always have a transparency, and anything that's not nil is considered true by Lua, which means this will return the transparency. And because of the lazy evaluation, if this is false, it's just going to go straight over here. <clears throat> so we're going to check if it's a base part, then we're going to get the transparency. If it's not a part, then uh, we could just get the find the first child, which is a part, and then get the transparency of that. And similarly, I'm going to do the same for my can collide, but instead of transparency, I'm going to get the can collide. All right, so I have my uh, variables here. I'm just going to make another variable called spawn. And this will just hold whether the object is visible or not, like if it's spawned or despawned. That way I can toggle between uh, spawning and despawning. So by default, the hay bale will not be spawned in. So I'm going to set that to false. Now I'm going to make two functions. One function despawns the part and the other spawns the part so we can uh, make the code a little bit clearer. So I have my uh, functions here, so... All right, so first I'm gonna make a spawn part function. And uh, in here, I'm gonna check if the part is a model. If it is, then we're gonna loop over... Um, we're gonna loop over the childs of the part, the children. So part get children. So if it's a model, then uh, using the pairs iterator, we're going to uh, loop through every child of the part or the model uh, in this case. Um, and then we're going to check if the um, object is a base part. Then we're going to set the i.transparency equals 1, which means it's invisible i.can collide equals false, which means that um, uh, it doesn't do physics and stuff, so you will be able to walk through it. And I'm actually going to replace this with descendants because I think that captures uh, more of the parts inside a model if you've got a lot of nested stuff. Next, else if the part is a base part then we can just set the part dot transparency equal to one and the part dot can collide equal to false so you can see what it does here if it's a model loop over the descendants of the model if it's a part we're gonna set, make it invisible um, else if the part is already a part then we can just set its transparency and can collide to the respective values um, next function is despawn part and this will have basically the same structure, so I'm just going to copy and paste this into the other function. And instead of setting the transparency to 1, I'm going to set it to the original transparency. And the can collide will be set to the original can collide. Same for the uh, base part one. Transparency, original can collide. So basically does the same thing as a spawn part, except it sets it to the original transparency of the part and the original can collide of the part. All right, so now we have our two functions. Uh, now we have to make a, uh, a function that handles the button click. So button dot mouse button one click connect function. So button, uh, a button, a GUI button has a mouse button one click event and the mouse button one click event fires when you uh, left click on the button. When the event fires we're gonna connect that to a function and we don't need to pass in anything so I'll leave the parameters blank. If the part is not spawned then of course we're gonna spawn the thing in so spawn part and I'm gonna set the text to despawn part and also spawn will be set to fault. Whoops, true. So what this does, if the part is not spawned, and by default, it is not spawned, then 
of course, we're going to spawn it in. We're going to change the button text to despawn part so that after you click it, it'll say despawn part because you already spawned it in. And we'll set the spawn variable to true so we can check if it's spawned. So else, uh, this else statement fires if the part has already spawned, which means we're trying to despawn the part. Then we're going to despawn the part, set the button.txt back to spawn part, and set the spawn to false. All right. So, whoops, uh, just between the despawn part function and the uh, mouse button one click event, I'm going to add in just a regular function called the spawn to uh, despawn part. Uh, so when you run this script, it'll first despawn it because by default you want it to be not spawned in. And uh, if they click the button, then it'll spawn in. So I'm just going to test this real quick in, in case I made any errors and then I'll fix them. So let me look, look, let me look at my output log. I don't see any errors. So uh, it looks like my hay bale is still here. Whoa. Okay, I realized I mixed up the original transparency and the and this uh bruh, okay. Um so just switch over. In the spawn part you want the original transparency and the original can collide. Um so let me just fix that real quick. And in here, one and false for the despawn. Um, okay, so now it should work. Uh, I uh, mixed up the functions, so hopefully the functions should do the right thing now. And let me go back, and you see my hay bale is gone. And if I walk in this position, you see it like... I, it's not blocked by anything. I can walk straight through it. Spawn part, it appears. I can jump on top of it. Despawn part, it goes away. And the good thing is, if I switch over my view to the server, you can see that the hay bale is still there, which means the server still can keep track of the hay bale in case it needs it. So, yeah. Um, so the code will be available in the description with comments and a template that allow you to easily just plug in uh, references in your variables and uh, that's it for uh, this tutorial a little longer than usual uh, but thanks for watching I will see you in the next video bye guys